it, the ego dictates endless prescriptions for avoiding catastrophic outcomes. Our lives do consist of catastrophic outcomes, but each of the ego's prescriptions breeds still further catastrophes. For example, we sometimes take medicine that ends up hurting us, requiring additional medicine that may even kill us. Thus, the ego at work. It tells us that specialness will save us, which compels us to leap into its arms, even though we should know by an early age that it does not work. Its gifts do not last. Still, we continue to embrace our specialness, leading to further problems that impel us to call upon it again for help. This apparently endless cycle serves only to increase our anxiety, guilt, and misery. With no other guide available, we keep turning to the ego and its avi- advice excuse me, of ever more specialness, more projection, more bodies to attack, more, 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 and nothing changes. The Holy Spirit, perfectly aware of the same situation, does not bother to analyze it at all. If data are meaningless, there is no point in analyzing them. This is an expression of the Course's first and fundamental principle. There is no order of difficulty in miracles. We do not have to analyze a problem because all problems are the same. They do not lie in the world of bodies, but in the mind that chose wrongly. This single mistake is all the Holy Spirit sees, and therefore he does not analyze our problems, nor help us on their specific level. Rather, he uses their many forms to remind us of their single content. The mind's decision for guilt. Analysis of the details of any situation clouds our awareness of the simplicity of the problem and its answer retarding the mind's ability to choose again. The function of truth is to collect information that is true. Any way you handle error results in nothing. Again, it does not pay to analyze specific error for anything done that is based on the ego's thought system of separation will not work. It may do so temporarily on this level, to be sure, but Jesus helps us understand the long-term implications of continually going to the ego's specialness for help. We pay the heavy price of having made illusions true and the truth illusory, suffering and pain being the inevitable result of such foolishness. The more complicated the results become, the harder it may be to recognize their nothingness. But it is not necessary to examine all possible outcomes to which premises give rise in order to judge them truly. This major theme in our symphony will be repeated again and again. It is not necessary to exhaustively study a problem. What is specifically wrong in a relationship, for example? For that, but spins our wheels aimlessly and pointlessly. Indeed, at times it may be helpful to analyze a problematic situation, but only as means of recognizing the innate, I'm sorry, innate futility of the process. It makes no sense to continue pursuits that are essentially fruitless. The only thing wrong in a relationship is that our minds have chosen the ego as their guide, which means we see our interests as separate sickness from others rather than shared healing. Needless to say, shared interest does not mean joining with someone in an alliance against another. For interests to be truly shared, They must be shared with all people, all the time, in all situations. Otherwise, we are preaching the now familiar hierarchy of illusions, the ego's destructive first law of chaos. 
A learning device is not a teacher. It cannot tell you how you feel. You do not know how you feel because you have accepted the ego's confusion. And you therefore believe that a learning device can tell you how you feel. We believe the body, which is the mind's learning device, can tell us how we feel. We then worship our feelings, physical and psychological, without recognizing their origin in the thought of separation that has never left its source in the mind. Feelings of pain come from guilt. Feelings of true joy, excuse me, of true joy in which everyone joins come from atonement, which is at one mint, which is oneness. The soul source of all feelings, regardless of their myriad forms of expression, is the sun's decision-making mind. Sickness is merely another example of your insistence on asking guidance of a teacher who does not know the answer. Sickness of the body is nothing more than a shadowy projection of the real sickness, the mind's choosing the ego and believing that its guidance will help us and its guilt will save us. This two-tiered decision for illness, the mind's guilt and the body's symptoms, seems to ensure that the wisdom of our true teacher will be forever denied us. Both the right mind and decision maker have been buried by guilt and the body respectively. The ego is incapable of knowing how you feel. When I said that the ego does not know anything, I said the one thing about the ego that is wholly true. But there is a corollary, if only knowledge has been and the ego has no knowledge, then the ego has no being. These are words the ego never wants us to understand, which is why, as students of the course regarding these words, our eyes gloss over them and our brains go dead. We read and say, Oh, isn't that nice without realizing what it means and how often we choose the ego. Sorry, my dog is pushing me. And how often we choose the ego as our teacher to preserve the non-being of ourself. Staving off the threat of remembering the mind's power to awaken to its true self. The Holy Spirit teaches you to use your body only to reach your brothers so he can teach his message through you. This will heal them and therefore heal you. Everything used in accordance with its function as the Holy Spirit sees it cannot be sick. Everything used otherwise is. Our healed purpose is now unification, not division, shifting the purpose of our special relationships from guilt to opportunities to understand we are not separate from each other. These unholy rela- excuse me, relationships become classrooms in which we learn that even though we inhabit separate bodies, our minds share a common purpose. We can use a sick body or a relationship as the means of returning us to our sick decision-making minds. Everything now serves the single purpose of helping us become truly mindful, reflecting our having chosen atonement over separation, shared instead of separated, I'm sorry, separate interests, healing and not sickness. I'm going to repeat that sentence. Everything now serves the single purpose of helping us become truly mindful, reflecting our having chosen atonement over separation, shared instead of separate interests, healing and not sickness.